Hi everyone and welcome to the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Simple Knit Co. This is a video podcast all about knitting and any other crafty stuff that I get up to. Um, if this is your first time checking out the podcast, welcome. Thank you so much for taking some time to spend with me talking about all things Yarny. And if you are a returning viewer, once again, thank you so much for coming back. It's wonderful to see you again. I hope you're all well. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Brisbane, Australia, where I'm from and where I live. Um, it's finally, autumn is finally here. It's still beautiful and sunny but it's down, the, the temperature isn't quite as high, it's not quite as humid, so very exciting times around here. So uh, grab, a, grab a drink, grab your knitting, and I can't wait to talk about all those things with you today. I've got a nice cup of coffee. It's a beautiful Sunday morning, so let's talk some knitting. Um, let's just jump straight into it. I feel like I haven't done this for a little while, so let's just go straight into finished objects. And the first one is one you'll see I'm wearing today. So I'll just take it off and show you. This is the uh, Beeswax Shawl by Amy Vanzilla. Um, I knit this for the Kanga Kiwi Knit Along. It's a beautiful big shawl. There I am. Um, and I'll just bring it up close so you can see. Yes, not inside out. I have worn it inside out a couple of times. The beautiful beeswax pattern. There we go. Isn't that lovely? And it's blocked out really, really beautifully. Um, so the yarn I used is from Fibersmith. It's their alpaca linen silk hand dyed yarn in the colours Haystack. It's the same colour I used, um, frequent viewers will know it's the same colour that I used for my lady slipper top at the end of last year. Um, and because I didn't know exactly when I bought the yarn, there are a few projects. I bought a few yarns that I could use for a few different projects. And I wasn't sure which one for, was I'd use for which. And so I did overbuy the yarn for my lady slipper top, and so I had enough left over to make this beautiful, this beautiful shawl. Uh, the pattern is really, really wonderful. Um, it's really easy to follow. The um, repeats become you kind of can definitely see where you're up to, and you get you can really get into the rhythm of them. Um, and you just kind of go, and because it's what am I trying to say? <laughs> because it's a diamond shape. Once you get to the middle, when you're doing the second half, the rows are getting shorter and shorter, so you really kind of pick up speed and it's um, really fun getting the momentum down towards the end. Because sometimes when shawls kind of start at a point but finish with a lot of stitches on the needle, when you know that you're going to have to bind off like 500 stitches, it's not, not always fun to look forward to, but I, that was not a problem with this shawl at all. It's a little bit wrinkly because I have worn it a few times since I blocked it, but you can kind of get the idea. Um, because it's got about 50% alpaca, it's still quite nice and warm, but it's still lovely and light and drapey. Um, so um, the only issue that is not the pattern, not is not the yarn, it's just user error. Um, because I was using hand-dyed yarn, I was alternating skeins. There is quite a lot, you can even just see there's quite a lot of variation in the colour in this yarn. There's darker patches, there's yellowy patches, greeny, greys, all sorts of colours. So there is quite a lot of variation throughout each skein. So um, I did alternate and I just, um, on the side that I was carrying the yarn over, I didn't do the best job of maintaining the tension. It's a little bit tight. So one one edge is kind of nice and relaxed and floppy and the other one's a little bit rigid, um, which, I mean, it is what it is. And it does mean that one side you don't get the same, can you see the shape? Not really. This is going to be really hard to show. But it does kind of, the um, way that increases are designed creates kind of a scallopy edge. I'm not going to be able to show you. Oh, can you kind of, can you see? No, you can't. The, <laughs> the um, yeah, the way that the, the increases are done within each pattern repeat is designed to create kind of a scallopy edge. And so just one, one side's a little more scallopy than the other. But I mean, it's fine. Um, I either wear it this way, so kind of just over my shoulders, which is quite nice, over a dress or something. Um, and yeah, you can't even notice that one side's a bit different. And then it just it does come about halfway down my back when I do it this way. Um, 
which is really nice and really crazy. And the other way I wear it, which is the way I've been wearing it today, is just standard handkerchief fee shawl style. There we go. And yeah, it's big enough to comfortably wrap and stay. Um, and it's warm, but not too warm. And I just love this color so much. This colorway is just so lovely. Um, it's like neutral, but just with a little bit, a little bit of pizzazz. So I really love it. Um, I'm super happy with this project and I just love, I'm so glad I kind of finished it right when it started to cool down. So it's been, I'm getting quite a bit of wardrobe action. So that is the Beeswax Shawl by Amy Van Zilla. Um, I do have two other finished objects. I know, usually there's only one, but I've, a few this time. And this is a long-standing work in progress. I finally finished the second of my little taupey ribbed socks. Um, so these are knit in um, the um, Coop Knits Yarn by Fiber Space Socks Yeah in the Obsidian colorway. Um, they're not super symmetrical because <laughs> I did. Uh, there was a bit of a gap between knitting them. I knit the first one and then I didn't cast on the second one. I knit another whole pair of socks in between casting on the second one, which is a bit sick of two by two rib, which is what these are. It's just an improvised pattern. I'll have my Ravelry page and all the pattern information for everything I talk about will be linked down below. Um, but yeah, that this is just an improvised two by two rib. Um, so I did. We get 64 stitches on 2.25 millimeter needles. I use my higher, higher, sharp sock needles on Magic Loop. Um, yeah, so and two by two rib, a little heel flap and gusset, um, then straight sailing down and a little round toe. Um, because there was a bit of a gap between knitting these, um, they're not perfectly symmetrical. And the second one, I think the foot's a little bit short um, because I was out at um, <laughs> at a concert and um, when I got to the stage where I had to decrease for the toe so I just kind of and usually I had the second sock with me to measure but I didn't have it with me so I just it felt right and it basically is I mean maybe I'm off by two or three rows so I did a pretty good job and then did the toe decreases at a concert which is very cool um, so yeah these are just great um, they're a really good color the legs are a little bit shorter than I typically would do for a sock which is they're kind of the perfect height to wear under boots because you don't have to fold them over there's not too much sticking out the top um a really good neutral color this sock yarn is really great um not really much much else to say the socks and they're done <laughs> so those are my two by two rib socks and my third finished object is my little oh not sitting very comfortably here um my third finished object is this little hat and once again i'm not going to be able the color's not going to show up correctly on camera it's a really beautiful like bright fuchsia magenta pink do you know what it is you know there's that um that like magenta pink in always in like the pre-selected colors on whatever word processor you use or whatever software thingy computers really know um that you use and it looks like a really pretty magenta on screen and then when you print it it turns into just like the pink that you're seeing on camera right now that's kind of what it is this is this really beautiful really blue bright highlightery pink Let's see actually the most recent picture on my instagram of this hat almost gets the color right so but it's just this is a two by two ribbed hat i haven't even told you the pattern yet this is the um hipster hat by petite knit um, I knit it out of Retro Saria Mondim, which is a 100% Portuguese wool sock yarn. Uh, this is just a four ply, two by two rib hat pattern. And so I had this yarn and I thought it would be fun socks, but it would be even better as a hat. And this pattern is really great. It's really easy. Um, I mean, it's a two by two rib hat and most, most of, there are a thousand two by two rib hat patterns out there, but the thing I'm most... I'm really picky about crown decreases. I've said it before. I'll probably say it a hundred more times. I'm really picky about crown decreases. And this one, every all the Ravelry projects, or quite a lot of Ravelry projects, because um, Petite Knit's quite a popular designer. So um, there were a lot of Ravelry projects, and they all, all of them had nice crown decreases. So I was like, yes, this will be great. Um, it was a little bit pointy, but it blocked out like magic. And so I will pop it on for you, um, just so you can see. It looks... 
a bit now that it's been blocked it looks more like an adult hat but when I was knitting it it was looking really really small um, so it fits really well it's nice and snug but not too tight um, I have quite a small head so like I love like I love big woolly cable hats I, I you'll Returning viewers will remember that I made a link hat um, by Emily Green earlier this year, and I love it. Um, it's in it's like a worsted weight cabled hat with a folded over brim. I love it so much, but I have quite a small head <laughs> compared to the rest of me. So, um, because I've quite a small head, hats like big cable hats just look. I look like a little gum nut or something. I just look <laughs> a bit weird in these really big hats. But this one is really cozy. It has a folded over brim, but it fits me really well. And it's really a really great hat now let's just see what's that there we go amazing didn't even mess my hair up so that can go in the positive um, positive qualities as well but yeah it's a really great hat um, for the most part you just knit the tube of 2x2 two two rib and then do the decreases I mean um, but yeah definitely the crown decreases are really great I think that was worth buying the pattern to get these really good crown decreases and yeah I think I knit it on the recommended needle size which is a I knit it on a 3.5 millimeter needle which I believe is the recommended needle size and the only modifications I made um, I did a tubular cast on instead of a um, long tail cast on um, I just learned how to do the tubular cast on for 2x2 two two rib so I wanted to do it again because it's really fun and um, at the top of the crown, instead of, um, for finishing the top of the crown, I just did a kitchener stitch across the top. Um, we didn't want to have, normally on hats, it's just a normal hat bind off. Um, and I didn't want a little hole at the top. So I just did a kitchener stitch and yeah, it's like pretty, blends into the decreases really well. So you can't really tell. So yeah, that's the hipster hat and I can't wait to get lots of wear out of it because I wear a lot of neutral colours. I think having a nice, fun little winter hat will be a really great addition to my wardrobe. So that's it for finished objects. That's a lot of a lot of finishing. Um, but yeah, they're projects that have all been on the needles for quite a while, so I was really, really happy to get them all finished. So now we are on to works in progress. Sorry, I have wool in my mouth. Ugh. Occupational hazard, I guess. <laughs> Bit of uh, fibre in the mouth. Um, so yes, we are now on to works in progress. And all of these are things that I've cast on since I last spoke to you. So that's all, that's very exciting. So um, I'm going to work my way probably down through how much I have to talk about them. So like the quickest to the longest. Yeah, let's do that. So the first one I have is a new sock cast on. It, I only cast it on yesterday, so it's just a tiny little, tiny little sock baby. Um, there you go. So this amazing yarn is from Sweet Sparrow Yarns, and it's her, there's coffee in that nebula colorway, which is a reference to the amazing Captain Janeway from Star Trek Voyager, which I've really just leaned into the fact that I love, I, I love Star Trek Voyager, and it was something I'd resisted for a while, because there's a bit of a, um, you know, stereotype about Star Trek fans, but I really, like, Captain Janeway is such a great character, even if you're not, like, a, sci a huge sci-fi person, um, Voyager would be the Star Trek that I recommend people watch, it's really, really great, um, but yeah, so this is a, uh, and it's this amazing yarn. It's on a sparkly, I think it's her magpie base that has the Stellina in it, so it shines. And then these really um, deep, solid coffee brown stripes alternated with these amazing speckled um, galaxy colours with just purples with then peaches and pinks and reds and all sorts of colours through them. It's absolutely amazing. She doesn't dye this colorway super often because I think she said it's, um, Julie said it's the most labor intensive colorway that she dyes and you can see why, but it's so beautiful. And so I've had this for a little while and I just wanted to cast on a self-striping sock. This is just my um, standard vanilla sock, um, 64 stitches, um, then I did two by two rib. Um, for about, I think it was about 18 rows, but it's just for five stripes in this color. And then I went on to going round and round in circles. 
um, but you will notice eagle-eyed viewers will notice I'm using a different needle to usual I I treated myself to a nine little nine inch circular needle um I don't know I just I knit a lot of plain vanilla socks I'm always looking for ways to jazz up my sock knitting try something new um train my brain a bit differently and I had seen them and these very like um Vegemite product you either love them or hate them um from what I've seen other people other people have kind of tried them and absolutely hate them other and people who love them just rave about them that it makes the sock knitting so much faster it's so convenient um so yeah I just wanted I wanted to get in get in the game and have a go um I always knit my socks on magic loop I always usually for a vanilla sock I will do two millimeter needles I like my socks at a really tight gauge so um that's what I do so I went I had to order some new needles anyway so um like some sleeve knitting needles so I thought the shop I bought these from had the nine inch circulars so these are chowgu nine inch circulars my first chowgu needles as well um and the cable is amazing like everyone what everyone says is true they're amazing um so yeah I wasn't really sure how I would go with the needles because as you can see the needle tips are really short like maybe five centimeters and um, that's a little needle tip and so normally I have m most of my needles have really um, like the five inch needle tips so I, my whole hand will rest on the needle even when I'm knitting magic loop or something all of my fingers will be on the needle while I'm knitting so this was a bit of a change but to be honest didn't I I adjusted to it much more quickly than I thought I would so if I just shimmy it around, I'll just show you, like really, I knit Continental as you can see. Is this helpful? Are you getting any information from this? But yeah, it really, um, my tension didn't go crazy or weird, like my tension is still pretty normal and consistent. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking probably as I go I'll get faster and faster, but it's not noticeably slower, even though I'm learning to use a new needle. and. Yeah, it's just really fun and interesting. So I've adapted to it better than I thought I would. And we'll see how it goes for the rest of the sock. I'm not sure what I'm going to do when I get to the heel. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But the one thing I want to ask, if you out there, if you use a 9 inch circular, do you, and you do um, cuff down socks, do you cast on with the 9 inch circular and do the rib on the 9 inch circular? Because I did this ribbing, I tried to cast on, but I didn't look at the stitches were going to be too stretched and it was a bit stressful so I just did the cuff on magic loop and then because I'd never used this needle before switched to it once I got to the stockinette so if you use a nine inch circular do you cast on when you do a cuff down sock do you cast on with the nine inch circular um, and do the rib on it and how do you do that and how do you manage the fact that the ribbing has such a smaller circumference help please <laughs> Um, any tips, very welcome. And also, if you've ever tried a 9-inch circular, do you love it, do you hate it, I want to know. And Because that these are the kind of things that I love, the things that really polarise people, I just find so interesting. And I mean, it's knitting, so it's not, not a big deal. You can use whatever needle you want, but trying something new is always fun. And, like, so far I've done, like, 10 rows with it. So far, so good. So that's my current sock project that's coming around with me. Um, and now I have cast on two Caitlin Hunter patterns. Um, have I ever knit a Caitlin Hunter pattern before? When I tell a story later you'll see why I'm having trouble remembering this but I don't think I've actually like cast on and like got a significant way through a Caitlin Hunter pattern before but these are two I've, that I bought literally years ago that I have sitting. They've been in my queue for the longest time. I've had yarn for them for the longest time but for whatever reason other new shiny things came in and I cut started knitting those but I have two garments on the needles that I'm super excited about so I'll show the one with less progress first this is the more recent cast on and um, this little baby here is my white horse jumper it's an old pattern by Caitlin Hunter um, I loved it as soon as she, I'm pretty sure I bought it as soon as she released it. I loved it, um, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with it, what, what I wanted to make it out of. Um, and yeah, so it's, um, if you're familiar with the pattern, it's kind of a, oh, 
dropped it. Um, it's a kind of a lace yoke with bobbles, um, three quarter sleeve, three quarter bell sleeve jumper. Um, the body is in reverse stockinette, so you turn it inside out and just knit regular stockinette, but it has the pearl bumps on the outside. Um, and yeah, it's really, really gorgeous. Um, so I've wanted to knit it for the longest time and I, the yarn I'm actually using, I had bought for a different project. Do I have a show offable ball? Oh, this is good enough. So this is, um, Adagio Mills Alpaca, which is one of my favorite yarns, like of all time. If like, you know, you think like, is there a yarn brand that I can just knit everything out of? Adagio Mills is one of them. I love, 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 love their alpaca. And this is their Sonata colorway. So, um, Adagio Mills is an alpaca farm in New South Wales in Australia. Excuse me. Am I going to sneeze? No, we're good. Um, they're an alpaca mill in New South Wales in Orange. And they, um, they have their own alpaca. And they then wanted to pr process, the, produce their own yarn, but there wasn't really facilities within Australia that they were able to do that. So they started their own mill. This amazing couple started their own mill. And it's beautiful. All of their yarn is um, undyed alpaca. So it's just blended from the natural fibers from all of, from their flock. Um, and they have grays and browns and creams and blacks. So all those kind of natural alpaca tones, but I have a really wide, beautiful spectrum of colors and the bat, the color batch it. And when they, they sell them in batches are actually for the fact that their undyed natural fibers are actually really consistent. Um, so should probably be, I mean, I should be alternating skeins, but you really don't need to. You really don't need to alternate skeins. You can spit splice it and not even tell. So, um, amazing, amazing, amazing Australian yarn. Um, I highly, highly recommend it. It's so beautiful. Um, so this is their Sonata colorway, um, which is a nice mid gray. And I'd actually originally bought this yarn to make a, the anchor sweater by Petite Knit. And then it just, the more I looked at the pattern, I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I do really like it. It's got like a broken ribby, um, yoke. And it just like, I wasn't a hundred percent sure on it. You know, just couldn't quite cast on it. I probably will cast it on eventually. I'll find the right yarn to marry together with it. Um, but this yarn has just been sitting in my stash looking at this dye lot probably for about 18 months. And, um, I finally was like, I want a white horse. Um, the samples in the kind of a mid gray. And I thought I really like that. I love gray. <laughs> drives my mum and drives my mum absolutely nuts that every time I knit a garment, it's gray. And she's like, do you need another gray jumper, Eleanor? Yes, I do. All the gray jumpers. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of the perfect, and I think the halo of the alpaca is going to look really lovely against the beautiful bobbly lace. Um, yeah, so I'm just knitting this two pattern. Um, I'm knitting, I think I'm knitting the size large. Um, I usually knit the size large. That works best for my bust circumference and my um, large wingspan. I have quite broad shoulders, so... Um, I'm a, definitely like a top heavy person. So usually the large size is the one that kind of fits me the best. Um, and yeah, I love it. I love it so far. It's so fun. The, bo the bobbles, because they're just little tiny ones, really don't take that long. I've seen quite a few people on Ravelry projects um, omitted the bobbles and that's like fine, but why would you omit the bobbles? They're like the most fun part. <laughs> I don't think they make it really special. Um, I know some people who've knit this and I love it. I love what I've seen of theirs, and I, um, yeah, I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I really don't have anything to say. I've knit it to specifications so far. I don't think I'm going to make any changes. Love the bell sleeves, so, yeah, this is going to be my cozy little white horse, and I think it'll be great for, um, a very versatile jumper, great for work, um, like, pop a collared shirt under it, and it'll look really polished and professional, but also, like, really cozy over, like, high-waisted jeans. I can't wait. Uh, sorry for that little break in programming. I could just feel, could feel a sneeze coming on, and so I just went and blow, blew my nose off camera. You're welcome. Uh, not going to make you listen to me blow my nose, but yeah. I've had a few busy weekends, and you know uh, when you just like, you can feel that your body is fighting something. 
this usually happens that I kind of get like the first symptom of a cold and it never eventuates. So it's really good it doesn't eventuate because I have my flu shot bo booked in this week and they won't give it to me if I'm sick. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like you can feel it. It's just like almost, almost like last weekend I could feel like my throat scratchy and then nothing happened. So yeah, and I have allergies as well. So is it a cold? Is it allergies? We'll never know. Oh, so that's enough waffling about my sinuses. Um, I do have one more work in progress, and this is a tale of grief and woe and triumph over adversity. It's, it's a long one. So, um, hmm, how do I start? Um, like the white horse, I had purchased the tenure pattern probably as soon as it came out and if you are maybe not super tapped into the online knitting community um you probably don't know that like every person and their everything have knit a tenure by caitlin hunter because it's a it's just a good it's a gorgeous pattern it is so lovely and so i wanted to knit one straight away i saw it and i had this like vision you know sometimes you see a pattern and it just comes into your mind the version that you want to knit um like, yes, I want that in this colour. I want that in this yarn texture. I saw it and I was like, I want that in a dark charcoal grey linen. Um, which I thought seemed like a thing that would be easily accessible. Um, which is not. Like, there's a bunch of brands that do gorgeous linen yarns don't have... Um, they either don't have any dark colours, but they especially don't have kind of a mid to dark charcoal -y grey. Which is really... I would just had my heart set on it. This top, I could just see it in... A dark grey linen I was like yes that would be perfect and I looked and I looked and I looked um, local yarns international yarns everything I could find I couldn't find the color that I wanted and then I did find some charcoal grey linen I think I have it yes I do um, from Volen Berlin which is a um, yarn shop in Germany in Berlin Germany they have this linen yarn called Lino Mucca which is a Lithuanian linen that's really lovely and this was the at the time so this is probably like two years ago now the only charcoal gray linen that I could find online or in store in store so this is their cold colorway and before I purchased I went and I looked on the Ravelry projects there were already quite a lot of ten years that had been knit um, and someone had knit their tenure in Linamuka in like a baby pink it's really pretty um hers is gorgeous and it looks yeah it looks great Be um i was a bit nervous about buying it because it does say this is a light fingering weight yarn um so it's 245 meters per 50 grams um so it is definitely and it's definitely yeah a light fingering weight yeah um, so, but I was like, no, and it didn't say on her project that she'd held it double. And I looked, I like scrutinized the pictures. She did it in a pale pink, so it was actually quite easy to go in and scrutinize. And I thought, no, I don't think she's held it double. I just buy the yardage. And so I cast it on, and anyone who's knit this pattern knows that it's, uh, it's kind of, it's an A-line t-shirt style top with a lace border. So you, no matter what size you cast on, you cast on, uh... A buttload of stitches in the round so it's a lot of stitches to cast on a lot of stitches to accidentally Mobius so anyway I didn't engage swatch and I did because I knew it was like a finer yarn and I'm a tight knitter excuse me I had to go down to about I think a 2.75 millimeter needle and I, I did a swatch and the fabric was pretty good like the stockinette fabric was pretty good so I was like yeah that'll be fine and I cast it on knit like two rounds or actually probably more than two rounds probably about five rounds and I twisted it I think actually because it was I was the way my gauge was to get the stitches to sit together I actually had to go up a size so I wasn't doing like the extra large or something so that's a lot of stitches Mobius it undid it cast it on knit a few rounds it was twisted undid it Cast it on again, didn't twist it, but got about, probably about 15 rounds, and the lace just didn't look right. Like, the gauge was not tight enough. You, you'll see, um, when you look at them, like, I just couldn't get, I would have had to go down to a really tiny needle size to get a tight enough gauge for the lace to actually sit correctly. So I just threw it in a corner in a fit of rage and was like, this isn't, this isn't right, this isn't going to work. 
Um, so this yarn is still in timeout. I will find something to do with this beautiful linen. Um, so maybe a shawl, maybe a garment. I don't know. I'll find something to do. But I was like, this yarn and this project are not meant to be together. You could definitely make a tenure out of this. I would highly recommend holding it double um, because it's just, it's too fine. Um, like if you look, like that is not, knitters will know that's not a fingering weight yarn. Um, so I'm pretty sure the lady whose tenure I was looking at, I'm pr like, probably, I, I think she held it double. Um, so it's doable, but, um, wasn't right. And I just, I burnt out on it and I couldn't do it. And then I saw on, um, there was a Knit Picks sale and Knit Picks have a yarn called Lindy Chain that is, I think it's 70% linen, 30% cotton. And they had it in this amazing gray color. Oh, is that in focus? Yes. Beautiful dark gray. I think the colorway is called Ash. Ash, yes. And it is properly a fingering weight yarn. There we go. And it is Lindy Chain. So it's a chainette construction, which means, which is actually really great because a lot of linen yarns, are, a lot of plant fiber yarns are quite splitty because the fibers don't kind of melt. Be, just the nature of plant-based fibers don't like meld together like an animal fiber does. So they can get a bit separated and splitty, but because this has a chain net construction that really makes it a lot easier to knit with. I love knitting with linen and cotton anyway, but this is a, if that's a thing that's held you back from knitting with linen and, or cotton, the fact that it does split quite, and is quite dusty, this is definitely not like that at all. It's, it's not one of the smoothest, nicest linen cottony yarns that I've ever knit with. Um, excuse me, Isaac Chu, maybe it is allergies. But anyway, so I bought this in this charcoal color. I was like, yes, this is perfect for Tenya. And I just, it took me a while to cast it on. I think because um, my first few attempts had been such massive fails, um, I just needed a bit of time to kind of gather my strength and cast it on. And here it is. I am so happy with this. This is a first go as well. I cast it on. I didn't have to recast it on. Um, my Tanya so far, isn't it beautiful? Sorry, it's blowing out the camera. It's a nice dark color. But yeah, look at that. Isn't it absolutely stunning? So I finally need a Tanya. Oh, what I meant to say before as well is during that time after I kind of had a few failed attempts and put it down, it had already kind of blown up and been quite popular, but then it really blew up and became really, really popular. And I just have this certain like buck wildness of spirit. I don't like to be knitting what everyone else is knitting. I don't like to be, oh, which is so stupid. I feel like I've talked about this before. It's so silly because if you like something, just make it. It doesn't matter if 5,000 people have made it or five people have made it. If you like it, just do it. It don't, like, it, like you make your own clothes so that you can have exactly what you want. And just because like, you feel like you're jumping on a bandwagon doesn't mean you shouldn't jump on a bandwagon like the reason so many people have knit this is because it's so gorgeous and it's such a beautiful pattern and it's or it is a really good pattern um and that's why it's so popular like it's popular for a reason and yeah i love caitlin hunter patterns but a lot of them are quite kind of um bold color work which is just not i love like it's beautiful and i love it and i think it would be really fun to knit but i just don't see it as something that I would wear. I have a couple of um, garments like that I've inherited from my mum and stuff that are really bold, fun colour work knitwear and I just, I really don't wear them very often so I know that I probably wouldn't wear it so, but I love, I love her patterns and so these kind of lacy ones are really great and I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I finally have this much of a tenure. So I cast it on, I'm knitting the size large because I'm knitting it with a correct weight yarn so I don't have to go down to a tiny needle size to get the gauge that I want. So it's really great. I'm knitting it on um, a 3.75 millimeter needle um, because as I said I have quite a tight gauge um, and on this high higher sharp circular and I will say especially because when you first cast on there are a lot of stitches um, and because I'm using a metal needle and quite like 
and at plant five it's quite slippy these needle tip stoppers have been an absolute life lifesaver I don't have to worry I can just put them on the shoved in my bag I don't have to pull the needles out really far and then still lose stitches an absolute lifesaver I think they were they were really inexpensive um, they're the high high sharp brand not expensive you got a set of two um, seriously game changing especially for this project we have so many stitches on the needle so yeah I only had to cast it on once which I was so stoked about and I think part of that is I used the I've spoken about this before but there's a Coco Knits tutorial that talks about that um, is a um, long tail cast on using coming from two balls of yarn instead of having to make a really long guess which when you're casting on this many stitches is definitely preferable um, excuse me um, yeah so I did that and it doesn't mean that you're it's not like a bulky or thick cast on it just means you have I don't know it just was slightly more substantial so you could actually really see when you lined the stitches up even before you knit a row you could really see whether or not they were twisted on the needle because I, I don't know how having the two the yarn from the two balls maybe it's just psychological um, but I really felt like that made it really easy to not twist the yarn and this is the I've done finished the lace repeats as you can see really gorgeous the gauge of this is really great it's beautiful beautiful lace creates a gorgeous scalloped edge and now I'm just onto the stockinette for the body so I'm so so happy with this um, usually with a um, the plant Fabian I would be using my liquor wooden needles I'd be using a wooden needle with them but um, it's lace knitting so you really want to have a good point um, can I say Caitlin Hunter that girl she loves a uh, knit four together <laughs> which is uh, I say maybe my least favorite stitch um, it's a bit of a nightmare um, but she loves it she loves she loves her knit four together so <laughs> in both the Tanya and the white horse I've had a knit four together so I'm really really stoked with this project and there's a reason that everyone's knit one it's really fun and beautiful I am gonna do it with the short sleeves um, I have this very lofty goal that I want it to be done and to wear to my friend's wedding in a month um, I think I can do it I'm quite a fair way through the body so then it's just separating and then doing the little baby sleeves but yeah that is my Tanya and yet I highly recommend casting one on um, excuse me they're really lovely it looks great it's the um, it's like a really good chart to follow um, like just be brave you're not going to make a mistake <laughs> be brave you're not gonna twist it I believe in you but yeah so it's kind of one, this is one of those projects that's been like hanging over my head for such a long time and I'm just so thrilled that I'm finally going to have a Tanya of my own. So hopefully that will be finished soon-ish. Yeah. Very, very excited about that project. Um, so that's all that I've been knitting on recently. Um, it just feels really good. I'm kind of in a rhythm at the moment of casting off casting on like trying not to cast on too many projects at the same time although having two garments on the needles at the same time is interesting I actually I was good I um I cast on the white horse once I'd finished the lace section of my tenure so I've got one that's kind of lace and then one that's just in stockinette stage so depending on how I'm feeling I have something to knit that either if I want to do some thinking and pattern following or if I just want to sit and go around and around in circles I have something to knit so that's, that's actually I think a good way to keep a good flow of projects going but also in a way that they're kind of fulfilling different parts of your brain um, but yeah that's all the knitting that I have to share with you I'm trying to think if there's anything else I have to talk about I haven't been reading all that much been a bit busy and overwhelmed so my brain hasn't been in a reading um, a good place for that but I have been watching quite a lot of TV um, on 
if you're in Australia, SBS, SBS On Demand, I'm sure you already know, is just like the best for, it's free, like you have to put in your email address, but it's free. And um, there's so many full seasons of really good shows. There's a lot of um, like uh, European, Scandinavian crime dramas, um, which are really, really, really good. Um, they recently put up the second season of Trapped, which is an Icelandic procedural crime show and it's so so good um the first season was amazing the second season also equally amazing um the main actor is also from one of my favorite tv shows of all time lady dynamite he plays um the like show version of maria bamford's husband scott and he's Olafur Olafsson, he's so cool, and so he's hilarious in, he's, he was in The Meg as well, that giant shark movie, my favourite genre of films, giant shark film, um, so he was in that, he's in Lady Dynamite, hilarious comedic actor, but then in Trapped he's such a, an incredible dramatic actor, playing a really, um, a really complicated character that he does so well, so highly, highly recommend getting your mitts on Trapped to watch a really great show, um, what else? What else have I been watching? Um, a new show called Project Blue Book, which is about um, the Air Force investigating uh, UFO sightings, like in the 50s. Um, a nice little period drama. It's like I've watched like, the first four episodes. It's starting to get a little bit repetitive <laughs> after four episodes, but it's pretty good. Um, yeah, and so that's kind of all I've been doing is just well, once I'm home and not doing anything, just putting on some TV and doing some knitting, which is really nice, um, way to relax. It's very relaxing and very restorative, but it's nice to still also be able to have that engaging restorative time that then you, at the end of it, you have something to show that you've made, which is like the amazing, wonderful thing about knitting that you, like, it's so relaxing and calming to your brain. Um, so it really is like a great leisure activity, but it still has that side where you, at the end of the day, have something to show for it, which is a beautiful garment, a beautiful gift for someone, um, something for your home. Wonderful. So I, once again, I don't know why I need to tell people watching a knitting podcast how great knitting is. Um, you all already know. But yeah, that's about all I have to share with you uh, today. Um, if you have knit any of these patterns, let me know. Um, if you are put off knitting a pattern because it's really popular, like me, let me know. Um, I'd love to hear what you're, what you're getting up to and what you're doing. Um, feel free to hit me up on Instagram and Ravelry. Always happy to say hi and talk all things knitting. Um, but I hope you're all well. I hope you all have a wonderful few weeks. Easter's coming up. So we have a giant cluster of public holidays in Australia. Very excited for a lot of bulk knitting time. So take care i hope you have a wonderful rest of your week a great restful sunday and a wonderful rest of your week and i will see you in the next episode bye